Voyager NCC 74656 was only the second intrepid class starship ever built. At 1,130 feet long, a mass of one and a half million tons, 15 decks, and a crew complement of 141, Voyager was much smaller than Galaxy class vessels, but was far more maneuverable than the larger ships in the fleet. On our first mission, locating and capturing a Marquis vessel, in the Badlands, both Voyager and the Marquis ships were swept across the galaxy and deep into the Delta Quadrant by an alien known as the Caretaker. Captain Janeway opted to destroy the Caretaker's array to help protect a species known as the Acumba. But by doing so, she stranded both the Voyager and Marquis vessel in the Delta Quadrant 70,000 light years from home. Both crews joined together to embark on their 70 year journey home. Voyager was designed as a multi-mission exploration vessel <coughs> that would be supported by regular visits to star bases. And although she represented the cutting edge of Starfleet technology, she was far from the ideal vessel for such a massive journey. She had a normal cruising speed of warp 6 and a sustainable cruise velocity of warp 9. If necessary, she could maintain a top speed of warp 9.975 for 12 hours. This meant she could cover approximately a thousand light years every 12 months. She was built to carry enough fuel for roughly three years of continuous space exploration. So from the beginning, it was clear that the crew would have to modify the ship. Systems were rerouted to conserve as much power as possible. In particular, the use of replicators was extreme, extremely restricted. Shuttle, which was designed to operate within the planet's atmosphere, was close. 
most related to the club, the runabout, and they were based on the same hull design. The Aero Shuttle was a multi mission vessel that was intended for long range reconnaissance missions, planetary landings, and crew excavation. It was considerably larger than a standard shuttle and was suitable for extended missions. It was warp capable, and the warp core ran down the spine of the ship with a single race track dilithium swirl chamber, positioned roughly in the middle of the fed the twin warp nacelles. The warp core also provided power to the defensive shields. The navigation deflector and forward pairs of Type 4 phaser arrays. The aero shuttle was also fitted with two micro launchers. The aero shuttle was designed to dock seamlessly with his mothership, with the structural integrity fields ensuring that it was completely integrated. Hatches in the hull allowed Voyager's crew to walk straight in for the main ship. Aero shuttles were considered a ship class, and some entered service as independent vessels or were assigned to the hangars of larger Starfleet vessels. I don't actually remember seeing it on any of the episodes. <laughs> Most large fleet, starship fleets, Voyager was designed to land on a planet's surface. With uh, I can't see it on there. It's happened several times in the series. I worked more than say nacelles moved. Using variable geo geometry warp nacelles that swung into position when the ship went to warp. This was part of a redesign that prevented the warp systems from causing permanent damage to the fabric of space. Although, once again, it was used on no other ships. The Voyager was the least favourite of my TV shows. <laughs> Main deflector dish. <laughs> 